You're listening to the Native Plants Healthy Planet Podcast, presented by Pinelands Nursery. Here are your hosts, Fran Chismar and Tom Knezic. Welcome back to The Buzz, brought to you by the Native Plants Healthy Planet podcast, presented by Pinelands Nursery. I am Fran Chismar. And I'm Tom Knezic, and today we have episode 75. Yeah, I guess it would be helpful if yeah. I actually updated that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and it's a little bit different today. We're, we're, it is. We still have a lot of our great segments, but not quite as many because we have a, a special interactive activity. Interactive for us, not interactive yeah. for, for no, you. No, it, 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 it's either going to be great radio or yeah. great podcasting or absolutely horrible podcasting yeah. I, I, I have a feeling it's going to be the latter but yeah we'll see we won't know until we do it yeah one of our one of our co-workers came up with an idea and we decided to incorporate it so we're we're excited it's something that i'm going to fail at miserably and it's always a contest and i'm i know i'm going to fail yeah so yeah. Well, we'll see about that so, <laughs> no i know <laughs> but another thing we wanted to add to this episode was kind of a recap of our last episode. Um, we had a really fantastic root discussion uh, with four just excellent guests and all about some of, uh, well, basically women and and working their way into ecology. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was a lot to unpack for, for me. There was, there was a lot there that I wasn't expecting to hear. No, you know, I, I really couldn't wait to edit that one to listen to it mm -hmm. because I needed to listen. It was so much that I, I felt like I needed to to go back and revisit. And you know, I I couldn't stop thinking about that episode for for quite some time after yeah. we recorded it. There were like you said, it was a lot to unpack, and I just did a lot of reflecting over mm -hmm. over the years and my my time in the industry. And it it just I was disappointed in myself that there were so many things that were brought up that I never thought about yeah oh yeah and that was when we I, I don't remember exactly how we worded the question but asked like what were some of the the things that were challenges to get into e ecology horticulture those kind of things and um i was expecting oh i had a, a professor who really held me back because he didn't respect me because i was a woman those kind of answers or i had a co-worker who yeah who just who was really me. sexist and and just... um i wasn't expecting to hear oh yeah we it's hard to find gloves it's hard to find clothes to and, and boots to wear in the and 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 then on top of that maternity clothes to wear in the field. I that was not something I considered. Um, it, you know, because it doesn't affect us. Yeah, and well, it's and it just made you realize the gender bias that's built in to mm -hmm. this industry yeah. or these this part of the industry that you, because it doesn't affect us, you don't you don't really think yeah. about it. And and. Until the internet became more popular, I had a really hard time finding shoes that fit me, yeah. just because well, I. Well, you were tall. Uh, you I'm, wear tall sizes, yeah. right? And and. But uh, that's like a whole nother level. Yeah, so I understand it's difficult to find things if you are outside of that norm. Yeah. But it seems like our industry has really just kind of restricted the norm, and you, I don't. You can't necessarily fault a lot of these companies because Maybe they ninety nine percent of what they're making is, is for. They're, they're producing something for a certain clientele yeah. that tends to be heavily male dominated. And now the market's kind of swinging that there, there is a need for those kind of things. And um, maybe the market hasn't shifted to supplying women's outdoor uh, workwear as fast as it should have. And, you know, there, there's been a lot of growth, not just in that aspect. And, and I thought about this after, you know, the night after we recorded, the nursery industry in the late 80s, early 90s was still very much like the Wild West. Mm -hmm. Now, I worked for a company, and on the facility I was at, we had 26 miles of greenhouse. That's massive. Um, and when I first started working there in 1992, we only had radios for the spring season, mm -hmm. and all of our equipment – was leased and went back after the spring season. So if you had bald and burlap trees that need to be moved, you were doing it by hand because you didn't need the machine. We actually would have a, a party at the end of 
at Memorial Day mm -hmm. for the end of shipping season, and you didn't ship between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Wow. Um, because you just did production, yeah. like you weren't open for business, and I that's hard to believe alone but it was like you could just people wandered around the nursery you couldn't even get in touch with them no one had a it was you know pre-cell phone you didn't have a radio like imagine 26 mm -hmm. miles of greenhouse and people just scattering and not knowing yeah you know what they were doing or where they were at it was and some of the things that i've witnessed during those years were somewhat a little funny and somewhat appalling you mm -hmm. know depending on the severity of, of, of different things but it's just it's come a long way it really was the wild west when i think about just how it operated then and and how it like I said there were I had bosses that had bars in their yeah their office and you would drink during the day you know it was just mm -hmm. accept it yeah. but yeah and and I guess I really got tuned into this subject it was probably three or four years ago now um, there's a, a horticultural program uh, put out by I guess it's through Texas A and M uh, called Eagle which is Executive Academy for Growth and Leadership and it's um it focuses really on the finances of running a nursery and the business aspects. But uh, we had a, a really great coordinator for that, uh, Kelly O'Reilly, and she brought this up. Now, I went through the program. My brother went through the program after me. There wasn't a single woman in my class. When we would have these meetings, Kelly was the only woman in the room, okay. typically. Um, and then when we have these reunion events where we kind of just all get together for three days uh, with everyone who's gone through the program, and you kind of break down. And uh, there's a handful of women in the room, but it's, I don't want to even say it, it might, it's a 75-25 split at wow. best. So, uh, yeah, still heavily male dominated. And she just brought it to everyone's attention, just saying, hey, this is something that's been an issue in the nursery industry, um, been an issue just overall. You guys being the forward thinkers already from a, a business standpoint need to be the ones that are on top of this and addressing this, not just at your own institutions and businesses but in the the nursery industry as a whole you need yeah. to be policing this better than than you have because no one has been doing it so yeah. she brought it to everyone's attention and that really just kind of took it home and said i hadn't even thought about a lot of that stuff you know you know and as an outsider looking at that yeah. you know there's there's a couple ways you can look at it for me at least that i can see it you know if you're sending someone to the eagle program it's it's you're making an investment mm -hmm. because it's it's not something that's inexpensive. It's you know you're making an investment in that person and your company by sending someone to that company. Yep. So and it's a lot of generational nurserymen, uh, I would imagine. Like a lot of people that I've heard you mention are like the sons of people that own nurseries. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a, it's a lot of generations coming in, but either there aren't the women there that want to come in, or they're not being given the opportunity that mm -hmm. someone sees and says, I, I don't know if I value you to this company as much as that investment mm -hmm. and uh, I, I wouldn't go as that far with that program i think yeah. it's more so it just reflects the actual the industry, breakdown yeah. of the industry more than anything because there's some of those second generation people that are there are, are women, women. Yeah. um so i think it just kind of reflects what the industry looks like but one of the things i reflect back on too is how different pylons nursery has been um that my parents started it because our nursery wasn't like that. Um, even now, it's like it's if you not. look at our management team, it's I couldn't even split. split. It probably even leans. Uh, I'm trying to go through my head right now. Um, it's probably it's probably sixty four. Yeah, it might even lean slightly more yeah. female than male. But uh, yeah, so it's that was never a thing for me. Is is when I looked at the nursery industry and my experiences, there was just as many women as there were men, and um, that was I think. One of the things my parents really valued yeah. was making sure that there was that that split because everyone has different innate skills. They have different ways of thinking of things, and you're not if you have a, a, a demographic that is heavily skewed one way, well, they're probably all going to think very similarly. When yeah. you have it where it's a little bit more um, diverse, well, they're going to bring different backgrounds, different experiences. They've been treated differently by people, so they're going to have different ideas on what's the best way to proceed, and now you can actually have communication and come to something that's a, a consensus yeah. versus saying, oh, well, we all think this way, so that's what we're going to do. But I think a lot of that in the early days, and this is just an observation, having been been in the industry for over 30 years, you know, back in the 80s, there were people that had college degrees that were in the industry, but it wasn't 
a requirement mm -hmm. and it wasn't because as as Amy and 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 Dr. Eckel mentioned in the green mm -hmm. um a lot of those degrees didn't exist. Yeah. You know, they just wanted workers and mm -hmm. if you were a good worker you could kind of move up through the ranks. So it was something that gravitated I think more more a male audience to mm -hmm. do that yeah. work. And that's kind of how it progressed. It's a lot different now. You know, a lot oh, of yeah. these a lot of these positions, they want a college degree. And now these programs exist and it's more of a split coming into mm -hmm. it. So yeah. it's it's changed in that aspect, just as far as a professionalism um aspect to the the job. It's just working your way through the ranks. I think really I'm one of the last generations where you could be at the position that I'm at without having mm -hmm. had gone to college. Yeah. It was just the time, timing and time frame. I don't know if that happened much after me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the, the big takeaway was that we need to have uh, more diversity in nature, in ecology, in native plants, in the nursery trade, because we need all those different perspectives to make it something that's good for everyone, because it is for everybody. I think nature is for everyone. It's, and, uh, it's all inclusive. And for, for and now this is, Fran and I, as white men, saying this, yeah. but um, for far too long, it's been dictated by white men what nature is and who can go to nature, and uh, and even though the our public um, national parks and those kind of things, they're for everybody, but when you go to them, you only see certain people. It's a it's, it's a difference in philosophy because somewhere someone calling the shots isn't looking at nature. It's something that we're all a part of. It's something that they own. Mm -hmm. And they're going to control who gets to do what with it. And that's, you know, that's an, an older mentality is starting to change, but you still have that in certain aspects. Yeah. So, but it shouldn't be that way. We do, we do, we do need completely, we need all different perspectives mm -hmm. for it. And that's the only way it's going to get better. Yeah. But it, it, at the end of the day, it's a conversation I'm proud of, not because we had four wonderful women on, but we had four wonderful people four wonderful on guests that I've I hope we can have on again at some point and on their own to really expand on, on what they're doing. Cause they're doing some really amazing things. They all do incredible and, work. And I, I look up to all of them for the work that they're doing. I was very happy to be able to have a conversation and, and sit, you know, and, and be, be part of it with yeah, them. Exactly. So, no, it was, it was a lot to, to take in and I'm still kind of unpacking it now, but it's, yeah. uh, I'm sure we'll bring it up on numerous occasions uh, yeah. as, no. as we go through future and, uh, episodes. So, but we want to make sure that we do keep visiting plants. I know that we're the native plants, healthy planet that finds a way to not talk about plants a lot, but, uh, I almost, but they're important parts is it's our, our focus started out on healthy plant or on uh, native plants. And it's kind of focused to healthy or shifted to healthy, healthy ecology. Planet. Yeah. Healthy. So, planet. You know, I just felt there were, there were parts of that podcast where I felt that I wasn't qualified to be there to, mm -hmm. to do it. I'm like, who am I as a white male to be talking about women in ecology? Because I'm not a woman in ecology, you know, and yeah. these, these people are, but I felt like almost as if I was doing a disservice by who I was, I wasn't representing it. Well, I did the best I could. And I tried not to insult anyone and just ask the best questions mm -hmm. I could, but it was, a, it was, I was at an internal conflict the entire time we were we were doing that. Yeah. So, but we got a, a lot of great feedback. If you have feedback that that you've kind of been on the fence about giving us, uh, especially in regards to that episode, let us know. We want to know, even if it's just a, a personal email. We love to hear it and uh, and help us guide us going forward. We want to have more of these types of conversations in the future. That's ex or, that's the essence of rooted discussion. It really is, and I'm 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 happy with those conversations that we've had. Yeah. So. But with that, let's get into our regular scheduled programming, and uh, and we're gonna start. I I switched it back. I didn't like the, I, our little shift. You know up what? Last I time. didn't like it either. So we went, <laughs> Thank you. We, and even even my wife, who who makes a lot of the graphics for our our social media, listens to the podcast, and she's like, "Did you guys not do this? That's hot this week." And I was like, "No, we just changed the order. It's at the end." And she's like, no, "I don't like that." So, <laughs> yeah, so like we're gonna either. go and do it first once again. <laughs> All right. Speaking of going first, would you like to go first? I can or? go first. All right. And um, All right, and ahead. these are just the the plants that we are seeing that we really enjoy uh, seasonally. So right now, one of the things that I've always I look forward to it every year is we have a field, uh, a seed field of Helianthus angustifolius. That it's one of the things, the last things to bloom in our seed field, 
and it's uh, so we have like ten thousand or twelve thousand plants that we planted in over almost like half an acre to collect seed off of. Well, right now they are just glowing. It's uh, when typically when you're driving down that road, it is just like someone turned on like an LED light that's yeah. just <laughs> emitting light all times of the day from that that section. Especially when you get a little sun on it, it's ref- like reflecting the sun. Oh my God, is that that really and stunning? You know what? For a tall plant, it's a very fragile looking plant. You know, kind of the yeah. the way the petals curl up, it's mm-hmm. it, it's kind of like the best of both worlds. It's very striking. Yeah, and I found a really great description of this plant on Mount Cuba's website. Okay. So uh, and Mount Cuba Center is a great place to go see native plants. Well, their website's really good as well, uh, and I'm just going to read it. It said, Swamp Sunflower is a tall, striking plant from the perennial border uh, or for the perennial border or naturalistic meadow garden. Bright yellow, two and a half inch daisy like flowers all grow on six foot stems clothed in rich green needle like leathery foliage, which is an awesome description yeah, of that really their foliage. Is. It's super, super thin. Another name, common name for it is um, is uh, narrow leaf sunflower. And then I don't remember if I mentioned the other one is swamp sunflower. Um, but it's, yeah, it's really just super thin leaves that are very leathery. It's a very unique, uh, unique plant in that regard. Uh, the clusters of flowers stand out when viewed at a distance, like I just described, or close up. Helianthus angustifolius lives in a wide range of soil moisture conditions. Swamp sunflower implies to me it's going to like it yeah. fairly wet. We grow it in a fairly dry field, and it does fantastic. Um, swamp sunflower is a special because it is among the last plants to bloom in late autumn. This sun-loving perennial grows well among Schizocarium scoparium, Andropogon virginicus, Symphiotrichum uh, georgianum, which I'm not familiar with that I, one. I don't know that And uh, Symphiotrichum oblongifolium and Euthamia caroliniana. And uh, mm-hmm. that is the part I really liked, is they gave you other things to grow alongside it that kind of match with and it. And it's That's... like nice textures. Oh, yeah, yeah, like it – yeah, totally. I don't know. I'm sure you've you've noticed it, but it catches my eye every time around the backside of the pond before you transition into the backfield where our seven-gallon container production is. Mm-hmm. There's a, a patch that – I'm sure I know how they ended up there by the the soil. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, over there too. You know, but that's such a great patch, and the pollinators are all over that. They're starved for it right now. They, you, you know, they they can't get enough. So yep. it's it's you, every time you walk by, it's striking. It's it's hard not to stop and observe mm-hmm. for a little bit. That's a great choice. That's yeah. a great choice. And what was your choice this week? You know, I'm. I was really speaking of being at conflict because I had picked this earlier, and then I saw something yesterday that I wanted to change it, but I, I didn't change it. So my uh, possum hall will have to wait till next yeah. week. So I got a great picture of that too. But I went with white snake root uh, because mm-hmm. it's something that you see quite often right now. Yes. I don't know if you know this, but the botanical name has been changed. It, it was previously Eupatorium rugosum, and it is now Ageratina altissima. Um, Interesting. So I never I n- knew white snake root, but I didn't know. I could when I walked by it, I I could identify it and say that looks a lot like a eupatorium. I didn't know it was formerly a eupatorium. Yeah, at, at one point we had it in production actually, and mm-hmm. it's you know one of the things that's striking about it is it it's more prevalent um, now, and there are some some varieties that are small, not like naturally occurring varieties that are a little shorter in height. Uh, but it does have that ageratum type flower, and uh, I thought it was interesting that it's now a geratina, uh, very similar to ageratum. Uh, but it's one to three foot tall, uh, white flower reminiscent of ageratum, facultative upland, can take sun and part shade, and it's native from the Midwest through the East Coast and Eastern Canada. It is toxic to livestock and can cause milk sickness in humans if you drink from contaminated milk. So it's something that's volunteered all along our hedgerows. You, I see it all the time right now, and it's one of those things where if you haven't noticed it, once you notice it and you ID it, you're going to see it everywhere. Um, but it's just kind of one of those things that's we, – we just had it volunteer in our backyard. It's growing up through our, our high bush blueberry. Um, we didn't plant it, but it's there, and it wasn't there last year, but it's there this year. So it, it comes up um, – and and you'll notice it flowering now. So yeah. great, great choice for now. Um, I I like that it's something that you can spot just about anywhere when you're going around, oh, yeah. and it's and it's volunteering itself. But it's not extremely aggressive. It seeds in well, but it's not something that's going to take over. Mm-hmm. You'll yep. just see one or two here and there, and it's. I think we also have it growing in our fire pit <laughs> right yeah, out probably, right outside. Probably. There's a lot of stuff. Growing yeah. There. So uh, 
two great choices. Oh yeah. Two, two really good choices. I'm really happy with that. So it's, um, I'm bummed that I didn't switch it. It's a great choice, but I have something for at least the next one. Yeah, and I, there was another one I like that uh, I think will still look good. I, I'm thinking the same thing, now, yeah. So, um, right. Yeah, so we got we got to save them up until it's, it gets to the point in time where it's really hard to pick. Exactly, so, exactly. Um, so let's move on to our, our botany-based current event segment. Uh, and, of course, we always make this competition. This is this or that. You can get with this or you can get with that. So we do have a winner. A lot of votes. A lot yes. of votes oh, yeah. this, this time around. But we do have a winner. Tom takes it this week, 18 to 15. That was very close. That was actually it, it got closer at the end. You were you were way ahead. And I kind of slowly was picking up some votes over. But we time. had, in my mind, while while not necessarily plant related, um, two really good articles. Mine being about how the I didn't like the title. I never liked the titles of the articles. Because they, being they, they about, make it clickbait almost. Yes, like it was, oh, LEDs are, are worse than regular lights. But it was really lights are worse than no lights for moth populations, yes. at least in that segment of the United Kingdom where they were conducting the study. But I have a feeling that's worldwide. But, um, yes, yeah, so that was a really cool article. And then your article I thought was really good as well. Yeah, and that was one that was recommended to – to me by one of our coworkers, and there's actually a few articles. I didn't even realize that the one I used was not the article that she recommended to me. It was there were multiple articles written on the same topic. Um, the other one was more, the one that I didn't see was more based on how important Atlantic white cedar are to our forests mm -hmm. in New Jersey, and and how devastating it is that we're losing that. Yeah. Um, this one focused more on the art aspect and awareness of it, but. You know, still great articles and different ways of approaching things. Um, I think it's funny that again, you took the scientific one. We're we're switching roles. We did, yeah. We did switch roles, <laughs> yeah. and you won with it too. Yeah. So, um, I'll go first this time. All right, all right, sounds good. Since then, uh, my article was from uh, Smith Smith uh, SmithsonianMag.com, um, and it was by Elizabeth Camillo. Or Gim yeah, Gim I'm going to go with Camillo, and uh, I would agree. It, with it was that. titled. American bumblebees have nearly vanished from eight states. Oh. And, uh, or I should, I'll rephrase it. American bumblebee has nearly vanished from eight states. Um, and a couple snippets from that article. Uh, the American bumblebee, Bombus pennsylvanicus, which to me sounds like a, like some kind of ancient like Roman or, or Greek <laughs> leader, like in between like Julius Caesar and Caesar Augustus, there was Bombus pennsylvanicus. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is Latin, right? Yeah, it's, that, yeah, yeah. It's, it it does kind of sound like that. <laughs> but, um, so uh, one's abundant and found lazily floating around in grasslands, open prairies, and some urban areas throughout the United States now face a rapidly declining population, according to a proposed rule released in the U.S. Of, by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The species population has dropped nearly ninety percent and could qualify for protection under the Endangered Species Act. Um, the Independence Graham Massey reports dwindling. Uh, despite dwindling population numbers, the American bumblebee is not protected in any state by or by federal law. Uh, American bumblebees are vital pollinators for wildflowers and crops, and their decline could have severe consequences for the environment. The species has completely vanished from eight states, including Maine, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Vermont, Idaho, North Dakota, Wyoming, and Oregon. Very interesting to me that it's been basically the Pacific Northwest and the Northeast. Like the far Northeast is where yeah. it has, especially when I think about maine new hampshire vermont not incredibly developed or, or populated areas either yeah and i you know my guess on those is that there's probably I, i'm not saying that they're not affected by invasives but not the same way we are in mm -hmm. new jersey and new york i would imagine i don't know that for sure yeah so um ben turner uh, reported that from live science the bumblebee species has declined by 99 percent in new york uh, and in the Midwest and Southeast, populations have dropped, dropped more than 50%. Depending on the results of a forthcoming year-long review, the American bumblebee could legally be protected under the Endangered Species Act, which would provide rules and framework for saving the species from extinction. Uh, currently, only two bumblebee species, the Rusty Patch bumblebee, which I was familiar with, and then the Franklin's bumblebee, which I was not familiar with, have received ESA protection right now. Uh, researchers can trace the bee's plummeting population numbers back to multiple threats, including pesticides, habitat loss, climate change, diseases, and competition from non-native honeybee species. Um, important to remember, it's, you can't just point the, the finger at one thing and say, oh, it's those farmers that are spraying neonics, or it's 
this going on or it's honeybees or it's it's really a combination of them. I'm reminded of a study out of uh, out of Europe a couple of years ago. It was on honeybees. Um, and I was talking about their how they were affected by neonicotinoids, and they found that basically the only places where they were having colony collapse disorder in these honeybee hives was areas where the primary diet of these bees was neonicotinoid treated canola. And they also had varroa mite present. If you didn't have varroa mite present and they didn't primarily forage off of neonicotinoid, like, so they basically what they're saying is you, yeah, if they're in a place that has a lot of wildflower habitat, so, and they're only getting 20% of their diet from neonicotinoid treated uh, airs, the bees didn't really die. Now, there are other issues that probably arose, yeah. but they, they were just looking at mortality in that study. But um, you needed a combination of these factors to really hurt these populations, especially very quickly. Um, so, yeah, it's habitat loss isn't just farm fields. It's also developments and, and vacation houses and yeah. warehouses and all that what, stuff, what, too, that we like. So what, what strikes me about the areas that they no longer exist is that they're all northern most states, yeah. or most of them are. You look at Oregon, you look at Maine and Vermont. It's a lot of those those northern states, and I'm, like to me, the first thing I think, without knowing the science, is climate change. Mm-hmm. That the, those areas are now getting way yeah. too cold for those bees. Um, you know, but I don't know what their northernmost habitat is. That if, yeah. if they go through Canada, or that's kind of maybe more of their uppermost limit. You yeah, know? it was saying in this article that their their primary um, where the heaviest or the largest populations of them are now are in the southeast and midwest but uh, i'm just reading this someone actually missed before that said states with the most significant dip in the bee numbers have the largest increase in the use of pesticides like neonicotinoids insecticides and fungicides so not just pesticides for insects but some of these other things as well. I, you i mean you you vacation in maine do you do you see that as you drive through maine not no like an increase could be they weren't using a whole lot now they're using some and it's you know it's also important to remember that correlation doesn't always mean causation so these that could be the case but it's it might not at the same time so it's very interesting though that because those are not places i would think that those are still yeah relatively you think about the the western states washington oregon idaho north dakota still outside of washington oregon especially the coastline once you get inland also incredibly rural yeah um yeah there are yeah. like you, you think in the midwest states and yes i'm sure there are agricultural crops but i don't think that's changed yeah i don't think that that's you know i can't imagine that there's an overabundance of more and they're spraying more yeah you know i i'm just speculation that's speculation yeah. for me. I don't have any facts on that. Just saying from what from the naked eye, it looks like yeah, to me it was that... uh, really interesting to to see where the decline was. But another really important piece out of this um out of this uh article was if the this American bumblebee is placed under federal protection, farmers or developers who harm the insects could face up to thirteen thousand dollars in fines each time one is killed. So wow. that's a, a huge fine, and that's uh, enough of a reason for a lot of people to not want to kill bumblebees. You know, here's the thing. They're, they're saying they don't exist, which means they're not finding them. I, I, do you ever hear about, like, patches of dead bees that people are coming across? Like, I, I don't know. And I think a lot of it is when, when they disappear, in a way, you're talking about something that's smaller than a quarter. In a lot of cases so it's it's really and to the untrained eye now and you have a limited amount of people who are experts in identifying them so even to, to see one at 10 yards a lot of people are going to be saying oh that's an american bumblebee they you really need to get close to be able to identify these things on a, a scientific level where it's you can really boil down and say this is this kind of of bee, but now it's saying that it's dropped by ninety percent. Are they saying over how long the population, over what time frame it's uh, dropped by ninety percent? It might have been in the article, but I didn't okay cut that se- snippet right. out, and I don't remember. Yeah, if it's dropped ninety percent, I want to know if that's gradually it's dropped ninety percent over fifty years, yeah. or yeah. or 
one of the things we've talked about before is people really haven't been studying these things that long. So yeah. I, I'd imagine it's a fairly short time frame. Yeah, because um, there is like if they've only been studying it for 10 years or 15 years, had that population already dropped X amount from 20 years previous yep. to that? I don't we, we'll never know that. That's that's hard. to yeah. part of the problem. But very interesting. Yeah, look at look at all the, the questions I have just because, yeah, I just, yeah. it makes you. And to me, the one thing that we can do is create more habitat. Yeah. If we have more habitat, there's more places for not just the American bumblebee or rusty pack bumblebee or, or any of these other more endangered, um, not just bees, but insects to go. There's more thing, places for birds. There's more places for, for rabbits and quail and all this other mm -hmm. stuff. Creating mm -hmm. habitat, especially if you can string a couple of properties together or you have a, a, a big property that you can include, it goes a long, long way mm -hmm. into protecting and help, helping bring back a lot of these species. Man, I want to know more. Like, I yeah, want to know: oh, yeah. Are they being outcompeted, or is it is it a loss of habitat? Is it you know how many factors are part? I'm sure it's all these factors, but I I want it like: Is there an increased number of of honeybees in that area? Yeah. Is there an increased number of something else in that area? Like, I would mm -hmm. love to know, but I guess I guess we don't know. The other thing I'm wondering too is if those areas are actively being logged mm -hmm. uh, more than than normal. Yeah, or or even developed. Yeah, more like than normal. faster too which just is because they are since they are i know there's a huge rush of people going to like idaho and wyoming and with covid and, you know uh, people leaving cities and, and moving because yeah so if you can work online you, or from home you don't need to live in new york city you don't have to live in philadelphia or seattle or you can live someplace a little bit further away and uh and skip the commute in a way yeah so that's a great article yeah, so i'm voting for you this week that's yeah a there's a, a lot of it was really interesting is, yeah, is awesome. what it came down to to me. Awesome. So I picked something this week that I thought would resonate with our listeners. And it's actually on a similar topic. One of our listeners posted um, something in the Native Plants Healthy Planet Facebook group about a uh, homeowners association in Maryland. So I had actually picked this article prior to seeing that. Uh, but the name of the article is How to Go Wild Without Getting Sued. And it's an opinion piece by Erica Graves in the Madison Park Times. And again, I'm just going to read a few excerpts. I, I probably put way too much of the article in, <laughs> in our notes, but I'll, I'll read some. Um, Dennis Moriarty, an 80-year-old veteran in Kansas City, was sick of mowing a 60-degree sloping front lawn. Traditional lawns require massive quantities of water, fertilizer, weed killers, which poison the groundwater, and gas for power motors, which pollute the air. Moriarty came up with a solution that would be easier on him and the environment while inviting and feeding a chorus of birds, butterflies, bees, and beneficial pollinators. According to NPR station KCUR, at the start of the pandemic in April 2020, Moriarty covered his 1,500-square-foot terraced lawn with plastic to solarize and kill the grass and planted wallflower seed, including 10 species of native plants. Um, Let's see. Oh, that's just a link to it. Moriarty uh, received a warning that he was violating city code banning the overgrowth of rank weeds and noxious plants. Moriarty was told if he didn't cut them down, he would face a court date and up to a $500 fine. The code, written in a way that really makes no sense to anyone who has grown plants, cites that unattended vegetation may grow higher than 10 inches. Trees seem to be exempt from weed status, uh, which will shock which will shock anyone who's met an Alanthus growing from their concrete. Basically, anything attended is all right, but whose definition of tending are we using? Marie Antoinette, Mother Nature's, or somewhere in between. If anyone did this, you know how many bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds are attracted to this, Moriarty stated. The city code isn't realistic in the first place. And a lot, you know, and a lot of times you find that these codes, I, I just read somewhere in, in our township talk where I live, complaining that they were doing something and they got a, a summons uh, mm -hmm. and a fine from the, the township saying that their, their lawn wasn't mowed and they were trying to work more into a meadow. So um, uh, thousands retreated Moriarty's Twitter post spurring a supportive editorial in the Kansas City Star and a phone call from the mayor. While the issue is not yet resolved, it seems like it was mainly an issue of tidiness. The Department of uh, Neighborhoods has an unwritten policy of looking the other way on native plants if it doesn't appear to overgrown um kansas city code expected a weed is gen uh, accepted a weed is generally defined as an unwanted plant leaving it largely a matter of perspective 
for instance, the leaves of dandelions, the sworn scourge of lawn growers are nutritional powerhouses in a salad and the flower brew of a sweet wine. Home gardeners like Moriarty have the right and uh, right idea of supporting pollinators in the environment through more sustainable planting, but the practice has yet to be fully mainstream, causing the occasional uh, Mr. Kravitz, uh, remember Bree Witch, to drop a dime on their neighbor for a weedy yard. And it, it goes on to list what other states use as statutes um, and keeping things tidy. And that's something um, Tom and I actually did a talk last night, and we were saying just if you're planting native plants and, and trying to have your neighbors accept it, if it's something they're not accustomed to, sometimes a border um, may help just make it a little more tidy and, and more formal looking as to what they're accustomed to. And sometimes you have to keep it neat um, just to, to make it mm-hmm. more accepted. So, you know, even though people are really moving in the right direction, we're, we're actually moving faster than than state or, or local statutes that, that to know how to accept this. And, yeah. and it's, it's very radical to, to some of our, our neighbors. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's something we've talked about before is you're for some of the stuff, you got to challenge the social norm and point out, there's really no reason for the social norm that we have. Yeah. It's uh yeah, there might be an ordinance, but well, why is the ordinance there? Oh, it's because we want to we need to do this. Well, what's the actual benefit of that? If you if you keep asking why, especially when it's why do we have lawns, there really is no reason, uh, at least a, a pertinent reason to why we have lawns today. Now there are places you, like okay, we want to play soccer. Yeah, you need to have nicely mowed grass yeah. if you want to do that activity. Most people aren't playing soccer in their their front yards. It's it's wasted no. space. They they don't want to go on the lawn because they don't want to ruin up ruin the the lines they have in it and and all that. You know, I I can I can stand on my front yard and quickly assess if I were to turn my yard into a meadow, I can look up and down the street and I can (laughs) tell exactly who are the people that would complain, you know, and it's because you see it's their Sunday morning routine, you know, Mm -hmm. and they spend all day in their yard. And that's that is their link to nature. They're not they're not going and and taking hikes. They're spending the day in the wild is is taming their lawn. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I know it would be challenged and it's. But it's a it's a matter of perception, and it takes someone to start, and it takes a lot of people to voice their opinion and hopefully make a change in local statutes that allow some of this. You know, and it may be compromising as well. It, you can't be, we want this because this is right. It may be you can have this, but under these uh, scenarios, mm-hmm. um, yeah. you know. And if if you know, it's it's one of those things where you can have that fight, or you can move somewhere where it's more acceptable, and you can do what you want. Um, but it's going to take baby steps, but at least it's, it's making headlines. Uh, it, it, it caused a stir on social media, on Twitter, and we're seeing lots of articles about this. And this is somewhere that happened in Kansas city, which I love. I love, I didn't say whether it was Kansas city, Missouri or Kansas city, Kansas, but (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure they would disagree (laughs) with you, but, uh, two great articles, uh, make sure we'll, We'll have this posted up where you can vote. We appreciate everyone that's been voting. That was a, a ton of votes this week. So uh, we'll get them up, and it's always a competition. Only one of us can win. This time Tom won, but I'm I'm banking on your support for the <laughs> for the next win. And uh, begging and pleading once begging, again. <laughs> <laughs> begging and pleading. But in the end, and of course, the choice is yours. All right, so moving on, uh, we're going to skip Grow, Read a Book. Not skip Grow, to, grow Read a Book. Your book didn't come in this. Yes, I didn't get the book I promised I would. So. And we actually have uh, no uh, listener questions. Nothing. From, we haven't heard from Saul in about a month, and uh, no one has called in, so there's nothing there. But we do have listener shout-outs. Listener, listener, shout-out, shout-out, shout-out. And I, I want to state also that I think I'm on a streak because I have no complaints. That's true, yeah. Have I just I, been complaining and just not listing think, it as a complaint? Yeah, I think that's more. more <laughs> that's that's, going on. All right, I'll accept that. But uh, we didn't have as many uh, five star reviews, so our only, only one, only and one. I might have missed it to be honest, because it was from uh, one of our friends in the the Great White North. Yes, it was coming from Canada, and you had on our interface you had to actually toggle a different button to find it so and fran found it and i'm like oh we might you know what it popped up and then it disappeared yeah. and i couldn't figure out where it went i thought maybe it they re- redacted it <laughs> maybe we had done something they they took it away but we're able to find it yeah so yeah so uh 
the review we got was a glowing review. Yes. And um and it was from I I I made run uh, which uh which I'm is Shredna? <laughs> which is uh I just figured out it was Hunter Jamie spelled backwards. So I'm gonna assume that's oh, there actually. Oh. <laughs> I so, didn't even see that. Good call. Yeah, wow. Yeah. But um no, wow. it was it was a really fantastic review. And it's nice that we'll find out that we're going international with this. Yeah, we uh, you know, I had to after seeing that I took a look. We have now been listened to in 75 75 countries. Wow. 75 countries so and and it was nice to say that hey even though we're in different areas i find a lot of it relevant mm -hmm. and uh we really appreciate the kind words um and it was it was just like um i i actually have uh our pastor at our local church is from canada uh, originally and now he's lived down here but he has a lot of connections up there and he actually knew this person oh really and uh just you know that um i don't remember who it was that made the, the great grilled cheese yes well he said she or, is it, or he or she i don't remember with Hunter Jamie, <laughs> uh, that they they make a great uh, bowl of pizza. So. Real? Oh, wow! I I hope they share that yes. with us. I would like to know. Yeah, I don't know how well that ships. That's uh, yeah, that that's true. Might be something we need to <laughs> so mine was actually uh, from someone that sent an email to both Tom and I, uh, Stephen Jackson, and and just wanted to share some nice words. Reached out, had a couple questions for us that that we were happy to answer, but also. I don't want to – they're working on a project that we're excited about that is going to bring together um, – I, I think more greatly bring together information and community as far as ecology and native plants. And we're really excited for what they're working towards, and we're excited to uh, to see it when it's done. But uh, thank you, Stephen, for reaching out, and we're, we're happy that you took the time to, to chat with us uh, back and forth a few oh, times. Yeah. But that was uh, – some great, you know, I, I appreciate all of our listeners, and I'm sure eventually we're going to get to all, <laughs> all of you. So don't think we're overlooking you, but uh, we have so many new members in the Native Plants Healthy Planet Facebook group uh, and a lot of sharing going on, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great pictures of what's happening in everyone's property. So keep it up, and you may just get picked yeah. next week. So do you want to? You want to get to the topic? I guess we have to, yeah. We have to come up with a good transition. Maybe we can. Uh, you mentioned like Wayne's I wanted, World. Yeah, do the Wayne's World. We, we could do something similar. How about we try this? So we brought our, our co-worker in. And we're going to, to start this segment, which we're really excited about. This came together really quickly because it was kind of just mentioned just a couple of days ago. Monday. Monday. And, and well, to you, Noel, Noel oh, I didn't oh. want to say her name. I wanted her to introduce herself, but she, she, brought it up to me on Friday, but I didn't get to talk oh, to you yeah, about it on Monday. Here. So so kind of came together really, really quickly. So um, why don't you introduce yourself, uh, who you are, what you do, and then tell us what we're going to do. Yeah. Because it's a little bit of a surprise to us. We kind of know, but we don't really it know. It is a surprise, a native seed surprise. Hi, everyone. My name is Noelle Walters, and I am the seed sales gal inventory, and I do a little bit of harvesting myself, and I work a lot with the seed group that handles all of our native seed for sale. And today we're playing a fun little game called Smell the Seed, <laughs> the native seed to be specific. And Fran and Tom are gonna have a lovely time smelling 10 varieties of native species. Yeah. And they have to guess what the species is. And the winner takes all the Jolly Rancher candy I have. <laughs> yes now tom and i are tom and i are both noel noel always has a jar of candy on her desk and tom and i are, i think fight to see who can eat more of it yeah oh definitely. we're the biggest culprits we're, we're disappearing both candyaholics but, and i will say this that noel doesn't help the fact because it's a never ending cup of candy yeah. it never it doesn't matter how many pieces i eat in a day we never make a dent <laughs> yeah. because we must walk away and she'll put more more in i'm so much of a candy holic when i when i worked at princeton when i first started working there i had a princeton nursery um glass on my my desk and one day someone filled it with m m's and i never questioned where those m m's came from but i ate them and no matter how much i ate them they never disappeared they just kept <laughs> filling it was the never-ending glass of m m's and then i would get up at the end of the day and put my coat on and there'd be my pockets would be filled with m m's and I gained 
I gained 75 pounds in like the first year I worked there. Seriously, like I like ballooned and then I took it all off, but they laughed. They're like, you never asked like who was giving you the candy. I'm like, I didn't want it to end. I was afraid if I questioned it, it would just, it would stop. So um, you're you're definitely barking up the right tree with offering candy as a reward because we're both, we're both Mm -hmm. on online with that. So, and for everyone who doesn't know, a lot of, we work with, it's, I don't even know how many, a couple hundred different species of plants and then uh, nearly a hundred species of seeds. And some of them smell pretty benign, but some of them are very pungent and very distinctive. Yes. So I'm hoping you chose some of them because I might have the advantage there because I've walked in the seed cooler a few more times than Fran has. Yeah. Here's the thing. I, I haven't really worked with seed at all. You have, Noel does every day. I haven't. <clears throat> so I'm going in blind and I, I don't think I'll get any of these right, to be honest. Not that I'm I'm conceding. I'm just saying I don't have a lot of faith in in my choices. But this is either going to be great podcasting or horrible podcasting mm-hmm. because you can't see our reactions. Well, you can if you go to YouTube and you you can watch the, mm-hmm. the video. We we recommend you listening to it first and then heading over to YouTube for a second view and, and you can take in all of our reactions for it. But uh, how do you want to start? What do you where do you want to go with this? So I'll start with the first species. We right. shall see how good you guys are. All right. At smelling. So for those that aren't watching yeah. via YouTube, uh, we, Noel has them in a bag that we can't see the seeds. So when you smell, try not to cheat yeah. and, and look into the bag because you, you'll you right. have an advantage because I don't know. I know what a lot of this stuff looks starts like. starts to look like. So Tom is smelling the first one right now. That is a very delicious smelling species. Really? Let me- really? All right. So, you know, I, I'm assuming that we're going to have things that range from delicious to downright nasty. Yeah. So, so all right. Tell me, me what you smell, Tom. Wait, hold on. I'm going to let Fran smell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> delicious? Mm. <laughs> That's your, oh. As my dad liked to say, it's, it smells like money. Uh, all right. I'll I, give, I, I, I can give a few hints. Or should we write fast. it down and hold it up? I'm so we let, don't. Um, well, we should write it down just so okay. so you can't just say if if you agree, go, oh, yeah, I agree with that person. All right. This is a deep water hardy perennial. All right. I'm gonna, we should have like music when we're we're writing here. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, we're, solitary we need yellow white, flowers. White All right. All right. All right. Do, you, do you do you want to? I think we got to hold them up at the same time. I want to change. Noel just gave a hint. Now I want to uh, change. Too late. What? Uh, too late. No. You I'm already like, wrote it down. I'm changing it. Wait, oh. no one gave their answer yet. No one gave their answer yet. I have to. I'm, I'm writing a new one. What sense do you smell when you smell that bag? Well, I, I'll tell you what my first guess was. And based on your. Because, you know, no. Oh, to me, it God. smells like uh, rotting tad- tadpoles. Yes, <laughs> it oh, not smell very good. specific. I, you know, my my first guess was Spartina alterniflor because that's because I, I threw you for you a threw loop. me for yeah. loop. But then when Noel mm. said single or solitary yellow flowers and it's a deep water plant, I'm changing my guess to spatter dock, which is new flower lupea. And that's also what I had. What? All right. Now, in, for the sake of full disclosure, yeah, Noel. <laughs> the answers on a clipboard and (laughs) did you see all the answers no just the first one okay all right all right don't put your clipboard down don't put your clipboard down all right so we we do have coffee beans to cleanse cleanse our palate in between man i had no idea that new far was as pungent oh, as yeah, that. Yeah. And it would make sense being a deep water plant, being submerged in water, that it would have a, a, mm-hmm. a scent like that to me. Um, when it, yeah, when it gets aerobic, because um, I guess the seed's probably anaerobic for a lot of the time. Yeah. It's in a place where there isn't accessible oxygen. But, yeah, I, yeah, that's, I really need to cleanse that. I would say you had me thrown <laughs> for a loop because I was yeah. expecting something sweet. I was like, oh, it's that's pretty, not sweet. It's a pretty cool native plant. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, so, it's a, it's an amazing. So for our listeners that don't know, spatter dock, it 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 can be aggressive. It it can grow into up to three feet of permanent inundation and tidal zone. So it's a lot of the time where we're at near the Delaware River, you kind of see it in that tidal area. It can grow up to six to seven feet tall, 
and there's new far lutea, there's new far advena. So then that depends whether the leaves are standing upright out of the water or laying flat like a lily pad. Mm -hmm. But that single uh, solitary yellow flower is a giveaway when you see it, if you're confused, if it's lotus or uh, um, fragrant white water lily, that yellow flower kind of gives it away for you to help you ID it. But um, it, and it can be ag aggressive. It, it can definitely, you don't have to plant a lot of it to mm -hmm. uh, get it to take off. All right, sorry. Okay, so next one, let me know if you want hints. I have lots of fun facts about each. All right, let wow. us, do, do you wanna, do you wanna agree to, to only ask for hints if we have no clue? Yes. All right. Like, let me see if I can get it first. Based on the smell of the last one, I was gonna go with Spartina, but your hint, if, if it wasn't for your hint, I would have guessed wrong. <laughs> I this have one's a feeling. very mild. Get in there. Yeah, you're... <laughs> like you really need to, to, okay. to get in there to get All right, a whiff. Here we go. Let's see here. Brain is is really getting in that you bag. Smell anything? <laughs> I, I feel like there's I have really, my bead bag on. There's not a lot of, of fragrance to that one. No. Uh, it's... I right. smell tea. Really? All right. Let me. I smell Wait, nothing. can I ask, is this going to be a mixture of both herbaceous and woody plant material? Yes. All right. Okay. That made things a heck of a lot trickier. It, yes, it really does. I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know, so I'm just going to take a shot in the dark. dark. Um, I, have an, I have a hunch, but I don't know. We're going to see how, how wrong. So, Do you want to go with a hint? Or? No, yes. after, so... We wrote down our answers. Then we'll go with hints to Let's see if we can get some get hints. It. And then okay. if we still, if we get them wrong, I say then we do it off appearance. Okay. okay. All right. So We're changing the rules as we go. <laughs> so don't tell us the answer yet. So do you want to say what our answers are first, or do you want? Yes. The... Let's do the answers first. Then we'll get the hints. All right. Okay. I went first last time. What do you have? I had Eupatorium purpureum. Wrong. Oh, all right. I have uh, Juncus effusus. Wrong. wrong again. Oh, sorry, fellas. Are, are either of us close? Not really, okay. but let me give you some hints and maybe that would help a little bit. Okay. All right. So each flower bloom lasts about one day. New flowers open each day. Peak blooming season, a large plant can produce 20 or more flowers per day. Bloom period is July through September-ish. It is a shrubby, woody-based perennial herb with large, attractive, white or pink, five-petal flowers. All right, got it. All right, I know what it is. Tom, mm -hmm. do you know what it is? Oh, Noel is now yes, disappeared. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, sorry, yeah. Tom wasn't in front of his microphone. We're having some technical difficulties. I, Noel was still showing on the screen uh, until whatever happened. I don't see her now. Everyone can still hear you, though, because you're through our soundboard, so you don't have to worry about that. But as Tom, as Tom works on the technical difficulties um my guess is oh wait i can i i, I might not be able to do that Come actually on, hold please. on all right hold on <laughs> boy you can see we're well prepared swamp hibiscus Woo! yes so i think <laughs> the 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 solitary like either white or pink flowers and the height of it um and just look at, I did kind of peek in. I don't know my seed at all. So even looking at it, it didn't give it away for me, but right. the, how small the seed was. How many, do you, you know off the top think. of your head, how many seed per pound on that one? I do not. All right. Do you know, Tom? But they're very tiny and they're a little heavy. No, I also don't know how many seeds per pound, but that was also my guess. Was okay. Once we Small got the, the hints, it was. Well, it was, you said I one flower a day, yeah. you know. I, I think they smell like tea, the, the seed itself. Yeah. I don't know what I smell. I Listen, I have to preface this. I'm at a disadvantage with having broken my nose seven <laughs> times. My sense of smell is horrible, but I'm yeah. doing, I'm doing my, I don't want any sympathy or I'm, I'm going to, I'm not I'm just saying it's a slight disadvantage. All right. All right. Next. You, number three. Number right. three. Here we go. All right. Tom is smelling now. He's got, wow. He's That's your definitely face in there. more, um. There's more of a smell to that one, but it still uh, kind of smells like um, like a wet cat. Yeah. <laughs> like not like wet dog smells bad. 
It smells what? Yeah, it doesn't it's smell definitely food. wet cat. Yeah, doesn't smell any food. Maybe like yeah, old French actually, fries. Actually, let me. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't cleanse my palate. Yeah. But the other one was mild. All right, let me let me try again. Oh gosh. Hmm. You need some hints. You want to guess? No, first? wait. No, I'm gonna. All right. That was a big whiff at that, the end. Oh, oh. Been... All right. Um, I'm gonna I, again. I'm just going to take a a wild stab at this. Hmm. You know, I'm going here. Here's my line of of reasoning that the first one that was pungent in a bad way was a deep water plant. So I'm going hmm. to go for something more wetland and something that may be. In, in a similar condition. So I'm going to guess soft stem bulrush. Wrong. Oh, I, I guessed, uh, I went with our first wood plant, Thank and you. I guessed uh, spirea latifolia. Ooh. Darn, also wrong. All right. Let now, me... we're, wait, before you give us any clues, we're either of, because someone did woody and someone did herbaceous, or either of us on the right track. Mm. No. <laughs> no, the no, no, the answer is no. <laughs> no. No, not really. Okay. All right. It's a native species. All right. A cool season, low growing plant hmm. has grass like leaves from a bulb below the ground. Although most of its growth takes place in cool weather, the umbrella cluster of small pink flowers rise up and tower over the leaves like a chandelier during the summer months. Hmm. Does that help at all? Is it? Help me. Allium cernuum. Yep. Yes. All right. Which is ding, not ding, a, ding, not ding, an ding. onion. So that was a great description, by yeah, the way. Oh yeah. So, um, would you have guessed that that's what that that no. seed would, well, would smell you know, like? You know, I said old French fries, but now like, <laughs> it's kicking into my mind. I, it could have been like mildly, like allium smell smelling. I but it was. When I'm in the sea cooler every day, I smell straight onion when I pull that back. See, I didn't get an onion scent yeah. from that. No. I really didn't. And that's what kind of threw me off. Like, even before mm -hmm. I said nodding onion, I'm like, I didn't get that type of smell. But, but all right. So we, we're both one for three right now. And, and, three. and <laughs> mine was completely because I yeah. saw, well, I, to be honest, I would have guessed along that line. Anyway, well, fortunately, but, like, you know, Noel yeah. threw us threw us a bone on the first one because yeah. if it wasn't for your clue i would have gotten it wrong so all right so we're three deep all let's right. let's go for number four here we go now this coffee bean smells like slightly salty to me i don't really? know if you're getting that at all <laughs> it's an arabica yeah uh yeah i kind of see that you want to smell mm -hmm. Ooh. yeah I'm gonna have no clue. Oh boy! Uh, yeah. I would describe that one as um, fresh rabbit poop. <laughs> Yum! <laughs> I don't know that if I know what that smells like. That's very descriptive. I song. don't either. I'm just imagining that's. Oh, it's slightly grassy, but definitely very poopy. Yeah, there's there's a lot of earthy, poop that, all right, yeah. hoppy. So. Okay. All right. Let me see. I got to come up with something for a guess for this. Uh, okay. Do you, so do you have no idea? Or are you just throwing something down? Uh, I'm going to, I would say Pontiferia cordata. That's going to be your guess. I don't guess. think that's it though. Right. I think that's a little bit like it would smell a little more wet. All right. I'm going to say Glycerius triata. Wrong. All right. Both of us wrong. Yes. All right. Is it a, before you go any further, is it a woody or an herbaceous? It's an aquatic perennial. All right. All right. So, so if we yeah. could, because it was pungent, like mm -hmm. I, I thought, because it was more earthy, like I kind of steered a wet, like I went with a fact wet, but I don't know. All if right. If you could feel it, you might have had some help there. Oh. The flowers give way to green mature, or give way to green maturing brown fruits, which are mainly dispersed by water. The fruit is a brown berry containing some seeds within a clear jelly-like pulp. Yeah, any more Ooh, hints for us? Yes. Uh, so. <laughs> Fleshy herb of tidal marshes in shallow water with large arrowhead-shaped leaves and inconspicuous <laughs> flowers. 
blooms from April to June. Uh, arrow, yeah, arrow. I would say arrow, Pal arrow. Paltandra virginica. Yeah. All just, right. Just because of the when you said the arrow. But when you said thing. that, I almost thought duck potato at first. But I'm like, that's not an insignificant bloom. Like mm -hmm. Paltandra, I thought of as an insignificant bloom. Mm -hmm. So we're eventually getting Good this, job. but it's, it's Noel's yeah. Noel's uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, clues. At least we at least we know how to plant ID. Oh, oh we, off, we don't, of, uh, off of uh, yeah. off of the clues. No, we're not. Sniffles all right yeah water. all right so we're one for four actually we're over oh, four and so i keep going back to the coffee it smells like really salty and it almost has like a, a urine quality <laughs> but i'm like a, i i despise coffee tom's not a coffee like smell but i yeah, don't drink tom's it. not a coffee drinker i am a coffee addict i consume you know what, honestly i'm probably about 40 to 60 ounces of coffee a day oh wow wow yeah I'm that's not good i guess that's not really good you can tell from my teeth, probably. <laughs> I need to start using a straw. It's my so, teeth yeah, were white at one point. It's somewhere to me. It's somewhere between like, like dehydrated urine and <laughs> and, movie, and, and movie theater popcorn. We, <laughs> we we have to come up with a new segment where you just describe scents, yeah. plant scents. All right, all right. So we're up number five. We're, we're about halfway halfway done. This is a fun yeah. one. Brent, how do you think this one's going? Very so famous. <laughs> you were, we're not a, well, you and I are doing, if we were guessing, it would probably be. I'm going to stir this up. I, I need to make right. it a little bit fresher. All right. Stuck my fingers. I realized even seeing the seed wouldn't help me. The stirring, it, the stirring it made it less fragrant. All oh right. my gosh. All right. Oh, I smell that one so bad. All right. This is, this is a heavier bag. Yeah. You know, one thing that I will say this reminds me of when when we go to trade shows, um, we take seed packets sometimes to give away to our our clients or customers or prospective customers, and we always put all the seed in a bag. Yeah. Yep. This this seed smells like that it bag. Does smell like, like when that you bag. have that bag mm -hmm. in your car, you smell that, and you're like, "What is that?" This species takes over. It smells. All right, I'm gonna give it back. Uh, Let me smell it one more time. It's, it's. I want it to be something else. Like yeah. it's very faint, but I when I yeah. know that species is like overwhelming me, but I can't smell it. All right, I have a guess. Would I really stick? Okay, I got it that time. Yeah, I. Right. I, I have a guess. You want you want me to say this time? Uh, sure. Echinacea purpurea. I was gonna go with. The, the last whiff, I want to say, Pensamin hirsutus. Okay. Mm, Fran was wrong. Tom was close. And then oh, it's Pensamin digitalis. Wow. Ding, ding, I was like, it's, ding, it's ding, less. Ding, ding, ding. It's <laughs> Pensamin overall has like a really pungent flavor. Like when we had it drying in the greenhouse by the office, I could smell it almost inside the office and just smells like wet dog. And I'm just. And it was just really subtle. I'm like, oh, if it was Pensamin digitalis, it would be blowing my brains out right Pensamin now. Pensamin digitalis smell. is foxglove beard Fox tongue. Yes. So, um, more basal foliage with the the stalk mm -hmm. it's a uh, small white flowers so like yeah. the the bees like to crawl in that's where you always see the bee butts and the pentamen yep. yep. digitalis tom was close but still close doesn't count <laughs> so we're still we're still both one for one for uh five all right i should have went with the with I, should, I knew that one was going to pop up at some point. It's you so know what? But I, fragrant. It just, I was like, that doesn't really smell like it to me. But You were so close. Yeah. So close. I, you know, and that's not one we take to trade shows. Like I was saying, when you said Hirsutis, I was like, oh, you should have went Digitalis. <laughs> oh, wait. I that smells really top. clean. Yeah, that smells like really clean. I wonder how our listeners are taking to this right I now. No as we're trying to be as descriptive I'm, as possible. I'm going to assume not well. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's um, man, that's another one that's throwing me for loop because it's not as strong as like okay. I'm getting a hint of something, but it's not as strong right. as I would expect. All right, I have a guess. Do you want to go? Uh, let me smell one more time. Get a deep whiff. I smell pepper flakes or celery when I. That's a good. For this mm. one, I, I would say. I don't mm. think this is right. I'm going to say echinacea purpurea. I am. Um, I'm writing my answer. I'm saying plethora ulnifolia. 
wrong, fellas. Wrong, wrong, wrong. All right, all right. Give us some clues. I actually all crossed right. out my first guess and wrote something different. So if I got it right and crossed it out, I'm going to be upset. All right. Hints. This is a member of the carrot family. In the right conditions, this perennial can grow very tall. I think uh, we only grow one <laughs> carrot family. So yeah, I, I don't be know careful. It might be a trick. Uh, all right. Uh, it normally gets to be around four feet tall, blooms from July to September. Coarse flowers and leaves make it largely ignored by deer and rabbits. Prefers to grow in medium wet to medium dry soils, like sites with full sun. Uh, small native bees, moths, and flies will nectar on this plant. Mm -hmm. And it is one of the host plants of the black swallowtail. Last hint would give it away, so I'll wait. Do you know what it is? I, I know what it is. All right, go ahead. I, I was going to say it's Zizia aurea. Wrong. Really? Ooh, that right, was wait. the trick. All right. Oh. All right. Hold on. All right. Uh, wait, get, let, me, let me take a guess first. So, um, um, I'm just trying to think real quick. Uh, man, I don't know that I have what four else foot is a... coarse, four foot coarse flowers and coarse leaves. Um, man, I don't know. And you said fern like foliage. Was it? I'm trying to remember. I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't. It was I don't one of the first. I don't. I. I don't think I have a. Maybe I'm thinking coarse flowers and course. leaves. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the Latin name was chosen because the leaves look like a yucca plant. Oh, uh, oryngium <laughs> yucca folium. I didn't know that was a it host is? plant for the black swallowtail. Yeah. I didn't know it was part of the carrot family. That's so, all, yeah. I didn't I know didn't that either. either. So mm -hmm. oryngium yucca folium is, I'm, tr I'm drawing a blank. It's a rattlesnake master. Okay, rattlesnake master. It's so a really unique plant extirpated in the state of New Jersey, but is uh, it looks very southwestern. Yes. But it is native. Um, in fact, I saw, I think it was on either Southeastern Grasslands Initiative, Facebook, or Kyle Leibarger. Li Li his um, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, uh, or TikTok, had like a whole field of it, where wow. like a native stand. And it was really incredible because I've never seen it in the wild before. I've wow. only seen it in cultivated gardens or where we grow it. So It's a nice. very unique flower. It is. I highly wow. suggest you grow it in your yards. So, and it is a great plant. And this is a great thing for everyone. You know, we talk about becoming one with nature and getting to know nature. Like how often do you smell the seed or like a lot of, a lot of our listeners because they're having trouble getting native plants are starting from seed. Um, so some of you have experience with it, but get to know it, get to know what the seed smells like, get to know a little bit, you know, it's part of the story. It's part of the process of, of, becoming familiar with it and, yeah. and it's all aspects and it just shows how unfamiliar because it's it's an aspect of my job that i don't have and this is all new to me mm -hmm. obviously for my one out of six score yeah that's <laughs> and, and the one is generous because we the got one it is all generous it was and, yeah. and i got it because i accidentally yeah. cheated <laughs> <laughs> all right all right there's some what? seed species that are beautiful they look pebbly oh, yeah. and they could be jewelry-esque almost Ooh. All right, I All am right. ready for the next Freddy, one. Freddy. I think I have some penstemon stuck in the back of my nose now. <laughs> it's like clouding my. <laughs> it's distinct. That one is very distinct. Um, uh, yeah, that's a, and it's the trickiest part of that one for me is picking which species in that genus. All right. Probably no. All right. Um, all right. I'm I'm writing down. I stopped writing guess. them all. <laughs> I just, all right. I just all right. All right. <laughs> what do you What do you got? I I I'm gonna pick Menarda fistulosa. I'm I'm gonna say Menarda didyma. Fran is the winner. Oh, Woo! Man. I knew it was, I knew it was one of them. I just didn't know which one. You know, to me. To me personally, Menarda Dinema has a fragrance. All Menarda have a little bit of a fragrance, but Dinema, I've said it before, smells like Fruit Loops to me. Mm -hmm. So just that, really? like, I, yeah. I don't get that at all. Oh, I just yeah. got like really clean, I didn't, herbaceous, minty. I didn't get yes. that, but I just got like the aroma of it just made it like I wasn't sure when you said Fistulosa. I'm like, no, it's got to be Dinema. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. 
All right. All right. Tom, if yeah. I win, I'll share my jelly okay, with you. I was, to be honest, you know how like you win the 50 50 at a charity thing, you give it back, back. to the, I was just going to give it back to the candy Did bowl. Uh, oh, yeah. I guess, I guess yeah. I could do that too. <laughs> Maybe I can pick out some of my favorite. We're the only ones that go in there anyway. Yeah. It's, so. it's, we're going to eat it anyway. All right. This is the eighth one. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah. This is number eight. And I have to come from behind with two left all right here we go tom is right, smelling let's first see here let's see i'm i have to do uh cleanse my palate again i'm trying a different method where you all right <laughs> you kind of pump the bottom of oh, the bag you know what? I'll, I'll try that too get some of that uh yeah just try odor. to get some air moving I, that's another one i don't i don't get much of a smell no, um, not really. Maybe my nose is broken. Like, <laughs> is this something that's pungent to you, Noel? It like, is. Like it's distinct. Like mm -hmm. you would. Okay. All right. I smell it, and Carla, one of our seed cleaners, smells mm -hmm. it distinctly. Yeah. I don't really have it. Um, I want to smell that one one more time too. Just the. I gotta. I gotta. All right. Um. <laughs> I have no idea. All right. Um, <laughs> no idea. I, I don't 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 say anything yet because uh, I don't yeah. have it. Okay. All right, go ahead. I have a guess. I, I know I'm off. But. I'm gonna let you guess first because I don't have one. Column of gross just canadensis. No. I know that's not right. No, that's wrong. <laughs> that was like no, um, you're not even close. Oh man. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with an artificial so again. Just think my nose is not picking up as much okay. mint as I need to. All right. Mm. Wrong. All right, wrong, give us some wrong, clues. Wrong. Give us some clues. All right. Perennial wildflower found in dry meadows, fields, thickets, open woods, upland prairies, and along roadsides. Its clumping form is stiff, erect, and compact. Clusters of showy white and lavender flowers bloom from July to October. Grows to be two to four feet tall. Spreads to form small colonies. Grows best in full or partial sun and prefers medium to wet soil. It has a particularly strong something aroma. I don't want to ruin it. All right. Especially when crushed or cut. Bees and butterflies love their flowers and enjoy consuming the foliage. Uh, that did not make it any easier for me. No. I uh, felt like that was okay. half describing it, a bunch of different things. Is it, <laughs> it pygnathemum? Mountain? Yeah. All right. Really? Wow. Tenufolium. I got from Slender the crushed leaf from yeah. the, the crushed leaves. I was thinking it's gotta be a yeah, minty yeah, I aroma. I really thought that would smell way more minty it, yeah. than than it did. It was mm. very mild. It was very mild. Maybe yeah. I grabbed a mild bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's been the kind of theme with all of these for me. Is I feel yeah. like they're way less pronounced than I remember them. And it's been throwing me off. All right. We're we're to number nine. Number nine. Is this lucky number nine? Yeah, for so time? now I need to get both of them right to, you, to, to tie. To, yeah. to come out, yeah. All right. Yeah. You're all right. This bag is heavier. Oh, okay. Ooh, that smells like tobacco. Really? Well, we don't grow any Nicotiana. <laughs> so all right, here we go. Tom's taking a nice long swig of this one, actually. All right. Hmm. That's a tricky one. I'm like trying to like feel through the bag. That's a uh, that immediate hit I got vanished the second mm -hmm. I like it just kept getting less and less and less. Um, hmm. that's that's a tough one. Uh, uh, no, I'll be okay. I it's not gonna help if I smell yeah. the smell it again. I'm gonna guess Indian grass. I'm gonna guess Zizia aria. Ding, 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 ding. Fran was correct. Oh gosh. Well, I, I, I have to admit I cheated. The label was in the bag and I read it. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know I would not have guessed Zizia. So we're both wrong on that one. I think it smells like a carrot top. Did you guys get that smell at all? No. I, no, no, I didn't. I don't know. It, what it's I, one of those now that you mentioned, I'm like, oh, I guess I just didn't know what a carrot top mm -hmm. smelled like really. Yeah. But you know, it's it's really interesting. Some of them have like the, the first one we did, the spatter doc, was very like 
rotten smell. Yeah. And some of them have like a little bit of a, a rotten smell. And then some are so clean and earthy that it's mm -hmm. hard to really, for me, detect. Yeah. What it, like none I, of it, these have been the same. No, like they've all been well, I different. Guess the, what was the, the Noel has done an incredible arrow, job of picking. The arrow, arrow things. to yeah. the, and the spatter dock. They're on one end it was of like, the spectrum. It was, yeah. The spatter dock was the most punted. The arrow arum was like approaching that, but it was like, I don't know, it didn't seem quite as wetland to me. All right, before we smell the last one, I want to give Tom the opportunity to tie. So before you give us the seed, just tell us whether it's herbaceous or woody. So at least we can narrow our guesses because we're all over I the place. I think this is helping you more than it's helping me. That's all right, then don't. All right, and then I can't it. tie anyway. All right, okay. You know, <laughs> all right, then don't tell us. Don't tell us. We'll, we'll, this is our last one. So Tom needs to guess this one for the tie, or I can guess this one for the, the all out win. We're all rooting for you. All right, on, let's Tom. go. <laughs> I can smell it. It wasn't for the yeah. Minarda Didima. I, I don't even need to smell it again. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> all right, let's. let's... Mm. All right. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back to my very first guess. So. This is a plant that when I was younger and I used to plant this in the, the spring mm -hmm. and you had those when it was like super ripe and it had been sitting for a while, you'd go like places later and see friends and I'm like, what the heck it's, are you it's, doing today? <laughs> so it's, and we're talking, I'm assuming this is Spartina alternative. Yes. Correct. So we, um, I, I love that that your dad's quote was smells like yes. money because yeah. it's, it's very pungent and it's one of those smells that that stick with you. My both mm. of my kids worked here over a couple summers while they're in high school and they would go home and just they couldn't get the smell. They felt like they couldn't get yeah. the smell off of them. They would go home and shower and throw their clothes in the washing machine immediately, but they would never wash it. They would leave it for me to get home. So yeah. <laughs> the whole laundry room smelled like like smooth cord grass seed. Mm -hmm. but Describe the smell to our listeners that don't know what it smells like. It's the one if it, it's the one seed that gives ginkgo biloba a run for its money. So if, if you've never smelled ginkgo biloba seed, there's a reason why there are so many male cultivars because I, I, it smells like rotten it, yeah, it's, urine. I don't even know how to yeah, explain it. There's it's, a, like a urea kind of aroma to it. There is like bad. a saltiness. Like a yeah. like a yeah it de and it smells rotten that's yeah. the the biggest thing it smells like not like an animal died but like, no it's not like 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 a rotting mushroom <laughs> or so it's like something that's gonna rot and give off like yeah and, and like like you're herbaceous. opening the fridge yeah. and you smell something like uh, we got to clean out this fridge yeah like something went bad yep. I don't yep. know what it is but it, everything's getting thrown yeah. out <laughs> like yeah. it's, it, it's that smell mm -hmm. now when I when I landscaped for a bit back in my i think i was like 21 years old we were working on a property that had mature ginkgos and the tree guy kept taking the ginkgo fruit and hiding it under the owner's truck seat oh gosh <laughs> and and letting it right like he was making sure he got one got fruit that wasn't ripe yet so you couldn't quite smell it and he would let it ripen under the seat of the truck mm. and it, you could never get the smell out yeah like this oh, yeah. gives it a run for the money mm -hmm. like uh but it's you know, and and for those that don't know, smooth cord grass. I hope we we describe these plants enough so that you know what they are. And I, I know Noel's descriptions really help. That smooth cord grass is uh, uh, native to our our bay. It's a it's a tidal bay grass. It lives in mm -hmm. the tidal zone, so it's wet and dry twice a day. Um, it it ranges. It could take salinity from zero to thirty five parts per thousand. But typically, where there's no salinity, it gets out competed. It's not as aggressive because it can live in the tidal zone and and it can uh, take high salinities. It tends to be a monoculture wherever mm -hmm. you see it in that in that low marsh. Um, but it's native all up and down the East Coast around to Texas, Texas I believe. Yeah. 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 Um, and it, it can be considered very aggressive or invasive on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So it outcompetes their native bay grass there, which I can't remember what it is. So Bartina alterniflora now, Borobolus alterniflorus. How's that? All right. So who's our winner? I oh, lost wow. track. By yeah, my calculations, I won two to I got one, to one legitimate one. <laughs> <laughs> or three to two, I won. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We both got Spartina. I got Minarda Didima, and we both got Nufar. So what do these smell like? Uh, they, that smells like Jolly Ranchers Hard <laughs> Candy. Woo! I can't Yay! get over the smell of this coffee and, <laughs> and how people drink this stuff. It does. That's... You know what? Until I would have never called out salty. 
until smells, you said it. But yeah, there's a, a salt quality that I keep coming back to. I wonder if I wonder if you know how like scotch will will take in the atmosphere mm-hmm. like the the barrels breathe. So if it's a Highland scotch, it takes in some of that Highland. Like I wonder if that's the same with coffee. If it's more in a coastal location, if it will take on a little bit like saltier salt air smell. I yeah, don't I don't know. I don't the know. coffee I buy doesn't smell like that. What's the coffee? So you don't buy? don't let it deter you from drinking <laughs> in the future. Tom, not gonna, Tom no, I didn't start drinking coffee till I was thirty three. I I so there's always I used hope. To drink some coffee. I drink it every once in a while. Um, and uh, it was typically I'd have it after like I it was when I was in college. I'd like party, and then the next morning I'd be like going someplace. Oh, I'm gonna go get like an iced coffee from yeah. Donuts. And I drink it, and then at my destination, I would like just I had such an upset stomach that I like felt, but it could have been the hangover kicking <laughs> in at the same time that was making me feel that way. Mm-hmm. But um, no, and then after that, it's really every time I drink it, I just don't feel good. It like wow. gives me a really, really interesting. I'm like, why am I trying to force myself to drink something I don't like yeah. for the yeah, sake I, of I don't... for the sake of acceptance? No. <laughs> And it might be one of those things where you never found yep. a way to like. I just I do black with sugar. Some mm-hmm. people I I can't stand it with creamer. It yep. doesn't do it for me. It's not the same drink. So everyone yep. has their own way. Maybe you just didn't find your way. No, I just don't it. think it's something people should drink. Like, it's a drug. It, 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 the it other is. day, it's a drug that I don't think many people actually like. <laughs> I and, like uh, Agatha. They, drinks they, they black. pretend they like uh, it. Agatha drinks the the social black. aspect of it. Black and the stronger the better. Uh, like she she wants like a, a bowl blend and no sugar. Like and that's. That's 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 pretty hardcore for me. It even. is. So creamer's my weakness. Uh, yeah, that's something. That, it, it just changes. The it for me. interesting thing is, and we, like, because I in Italy when my wife and I were on a honeymoon, like I had espresso there. I've had espresso here. That doesn't affect me. Really? I can drink that and I'm okay. But um, if I have like American brewed coffee, I don't feel that's, good. Yeah. I feel like really sick. Well, I, I think for, for my victory, I'm going to just steal a couple grape Jolly Ranchers out of this and donate it back to the to the uh, pot so we can all share. Uh, that's my give back. I just want a couple grapes out of it. And uh, I guess our listeners will let us know if they enjoyed this. If they enjoyed this, we can do round two and give you a, a shot at redemption where we do another round of, of uh, seed smelling. So yeah. I wonder if we can do it with other things too. Like blooms at certain times, oh, like disguise yeah. the blooms. Maybe we can do that and try to get an idea of, mm-hmm. or leaves if we know they're fragrant to crush them up and try to guess. So, great this, idea. This may just be the start of the competition. Yeah. So, it's like the nursery Olympics. Yeah. So, <laughs> Noel, before we let you go, tell us a little bit about your, your background and how you, you got here. Well, I knew nothing about native plants until I stumbled across an Indeed app and applied for this job at Pinelands Nursery. And I love native plants now. I'm on board with it. Awesome. Before that, I've just been looking to be a farmer and learning about farming different ways, organically, permaculture ways, and came across this farm and fell in love with natives. And that's what my life is about now. Awesome. I started a little nonprofit called Grateful Natives. And in my little town of Lindenwald, New Jersey, I'd like to plant some linden trees that are native as well as lots of other lovely native plants to give the residents of my mm-hmm. little town some joy. So awesome. that's what makes me happy. Awesome. Making other people happy. Well, you made us happy mm-hmm. today, oh, yeah. even with some foul smelling things. We're yeah. both smiling. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. that, was fun. that was a, that was a lot of fun. So I hope everyone enjoyed it. Yeah. Noel, thank you for, thank you for guys. Joining. And something everyone can do at home too. Yes. Do it with your kids. See if they like the smell of wet dog. <laughs> 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 Yeah, trust me, you'll never for once you smell it, you'll never forget it. So that's the one nice thing about it. As long as you have that like scent memory, you'll you'll remember. So Noel, thank you. Thank you very much Thanks, for joining guys. us. We have to uh whisk you out the same way we whisked you in. That was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun. I hope it was fun for people at home and they got something out of it too. I uh, I have my doubts. It could it could have worked. I don't know. It it might it might not have yeah. you know. But I love that Noel approached us with that and had a great idea. And yeah. We we ran with it. So I and I, if you want to watch the best way to watch, other than the the technical difficulty part that we did have that I fixed in the middle, um, you can do that on YouTube. I'll even try and snip that part out individually and <laughs> and put it up as its own thing. Wait, I think this this just in. We just got some uh, listener feedback on what they thought of that segment. Ha, 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 ha,
<laughs> just kidding. So uh, just for the sake of time, we're, we're going to skip doing a pod deck uh, this buzz. And we're also starting to run short. We're, we're starting to run out. I have to see if they came out with a volume two because yeah. I really enjoy the spontane, uh, spontaneity of oh, that. Yeah, and I'm kind of bummed that we're starting to. A lot of the ones that are left are things that we can't do. Mm-hmm. Or uh, we've already done. We've already. Yeah, exactly. So it's like replay your favorite episode. You know, it's just it's not quite interview your mom and dad. Yeah, we did that one. So it's 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 kind of we're starting to run out. So I'm okay for going it and I'll see if we can Mm -hmm. come up with with other ones. But um, I did want to break up. Tom and I have actually been doing a lot of speaking engagements, and we've noticed that a lot of our listeners are in these speaking engagements. Mm -hmm. And it's great to see your faces and, and hear your voices. Because we don't get to interact that way. It's mostly us talking oh, yeah. at you and not getting to interact. So, but one that is coming up that everyone can be a part of, if you'd like to hear the talk that that we've been giving about growing the circle, uh, the Bowman's Hill Wildflower Preserve Thursday Night Nature Talks happen every Thursday, and uh, we're going to be uh, speaking Thursday, November 11th, and we'll be concluding that series, the fall series. So we'll be the last speaker. Um, yeah, and I was looking at that series. They have a re- lot of really good topics that they, well, I guess it started last, last week. week. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they have some really, really good stuff coming up. Yeah. So. They have some great speakers and we're, we're honored to be a uh, part of that speaking group. Um, it's available through zoom, so you don't have to go, but if you want to hear expand on this, you can head over to bhwp.org and register registration is $15 and the program has a, a 7 p.m eastern standard time it's supposed to be an hour but let's be honest when tom and i start talking we, we've been running yeah, about we haven't we haven't kept it an hour we've been yet. running about it's, 75 minutes and then like a 10 to 15 question and answer mm-hmm. so give yourself a good hour and a half um and if you you know it's it's a it's similar to what we talked about but a little more focused um and it's we've gotten some great feedback on it. So if you'd like to be a part of that that audience, we would love to see your faces and hear your voices as well. Yeah, no, that should be it, – it's a lot of fun. I can't wait for that one. So, and that's the last one we have on our schedule. I yeah, think, for the year. it's the so. fifth and final one for the year. So, and so far. We're hoping yes. we get a couple more. But with that, thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed listening to The Buzz. Thank you, everyone, for listening to Native Plants Healthy Planet presented by Pylons Nursery. We're giving a, a – a big thank you to RJ Coma for our buzz theme music. I know we're, we've been talking about offering up uh, a contest for new theme music. I don't think I want to change the buzz music. Mm-hmm. I think that yeah. music is so synonymous, uh, the song Nightly Suicide by RJ Coma, so synonymous with the buzz. I can't imagine changing that one, but maybe we could throw up the discussions yeah. and meet the guest uh, music for, for competition and more on that soon as we get closer to the end of the year. Uh, make sure you stream or buy RJ's music on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your music. Follow us on Twitter at Pineland Nursery, Facebook at Pinelands Nursery NJ, Instagram at Pinelands Nursery, or at Native Plants underscore Healthy Planet, and YouTube at Pinelands Nursery. Uh, the question and comment line has been a little quiet the last couple weeks, but uh, we were on a on a roll, and then it kind of died off. So call us at 215-346-6189. I will repeat that, 215 215- three four six six one eight nine ask a question or leave a comment we're going to play it on a future episode of the buzz and answer it to the best of our ability let's not forget the native plants healthy planet facebook group we're up over 750 members now and uh, the interaction has been wonderful a lot of new faces and a lot of great conversations so let's keep it going over there you can now buy native plants healthy planet t-shirts you can find them on our website www.nativeplantshealthyplanet.com Uh, Right at the top, there's a link. It just says T-shirts or something like that. I always forget to look up what it actually (laughs) says. But it has pictures of T-shirts. If you click there, it'll take you to our Teespring store. And all the the proceeds from those shirts are going to the organizations that we're having on in some way. But we've we've chosen two so far, and we can't wait until we build up enough of a bankroll that we can do it again in a, a month or two. They, they've been thrilled. We've been thrilled. We're we're happy to be able to do it. And you should all be proud of uh, proud of yourselves at the amount of money that we've we've been able to raise for for these great organizations. We're really proud of everyone for doing that as well and pitching yeah. in. So, and I think they're pretty stylish. What about you, Fran? I own. Am I? I'm not wearing one today. But uh, Noelle was wearing one mm-hmm. today. She had on a I think it was Eat Native Plants uh, shirt. I I own I think five or six right now so it's yeah i keep buying them so oh, yeah. it's re- becoming my everyday wardrobe <laughs> so, um you can listen to the native plants healthy planet podcast on our website www.nativeplantshealthyplanet.com 
Um, but let's be honest, you're probably going to listen to us on the Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, really wherever you consume your podcast. When you do, if you can do us a big favor and leave us a review and, and subscribe to our channel. Uh, don't just leave us a review. Leave us a five-star review. And if you add a, a little write-up, a little comment to that, I will pick you as my listener of the week uh, on our next buzz episode. Yes. Make Tom do a lot of work. Yeah. Let's uh, like give him like five, six, five-star reviews so he has to do some research and uh, do a background check on you so he can give you some nice some nice comments. So, so today was supposed to be my turn for Secret Night. I, I, but I, I didn't forgot, prepare. Uh, yeah, and I didn't prepare last time, and Fran bailed me out and kind of reminded me of some stuff. But um, it was actually when we were doing the segment with Noel and I'm sniffing these coffee beans. It brought me back to a moment in my, my like long ago past mm -hmm. um, when I was just a little kid. Uh, I guess I was, I couldn't have been that little because this building we're sitting in right now, our, our office now was built. Okay. But it was, I think it was fairly new. <clears throat> and in the back of the, um, <clears throat> the main office here, there's a, a kitchen and they would have um, all the, the coffee. And I don't know where my brother and I got it from. It was my brother's idea. All right. Number one. And uh, <laughs> if, if you know my brother, he's a little wild. wild. Yes. And, uh, well, we, were, we weren't baseball fans, but I think we, like, watched, like, some cowboy movies. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that was notorious, especially with, like, the 70s and 80s cowboy movies, is there was a lot of chewing tobacco yes. going on. So we're like, oh, we want to, like, be cowboys and <laughs> chew tobacco or whatever. So we'd come in here and actually take, like, coffee grounds and shove oh. them in our mouth. Like, like oh. it was... And we didn't know what we didn't, you didn't yeah. put it in your lip or anything. We just load our mouth yeah. with like coffee grounds. Uh -huh. So when we spit, it would come out really black <laughs> and pretend we were, we were chewing tobacco that way. And uh, my dad called us the one time. He's like, what the heck are you kids doing? And then we told him that we want, and he's like, oh, if you really want to try chewing tobacco, I'll let you try chewing tobacco. And he, after church, this was, <laughs> this was like a really, he brought us to, uh, after church on a Sunday, he brought us to a Wawa. And uh, and I think he picked up a bag of beech nut, like pouch oh, chewing tobacco, wow. and brought us home. He's like, "Okay, guys, pull some out and put it in your mouth." And we pulled out, but we like we didn't know what to do. Yeah. We didn't know that there's like a process, and that yeah. you aren't just literally chewing this and swallow it. Yeah. Thirty seconds, we're both like running out the back door, sliding by his door, vomiting over the, <laughs> <laughs> the porch railing. Oh man, that made me so sick. You know. But, that was kind of very similar to my first shot. It was on a fishing trip with my dad and, and a friend of my dad's and did red man mm -hmm. chewing tobacco. And that's not actually, I guess, very politically correct no. <laughs> no. brand. But uh, I mentioned something. He goes, oh, you want to try it? Let's go. You know, mm -hmm. same thing. It, it, like within a minute, I was I was throwing up over in the bushes yep. on the yep. side of the lake. Yeah. So no, was, and my dad, that was one of the things he did really well. And uh, and I can't wait until my kids are old enough to do it to them <laughs> because he um, even with like cigarettes it was uh, I've, we had or they had some friends that smoke and we were on a camping trip and we like, kept talking about cigarettes or whatever and uh, and he's like okay let's go find find your like so and so and you're gonna ask him for a cigarette and I had to go up and I had to ask for one my dad kind of gave the nod to yeah. him <laughs> it was okay yeah. and they gave us and like and we. Like it was literally like one puff and like what the hell is this and spit it out and get rid of it and but he like he made us do it really to just cement that bad memory yeah. in place we you um know. And like at this point it's nostalgic it was like oh it was like harmless but at the time it was like oh we're gonna smoke a cigarette <laughs> you know, it was terrible I gotta tell you I started smoking at like eleven years old mm -hmm. and. And none, of, no one in my fam family smoked. But back back at that time frame, like early seventy or late late seventies, early eighties, you could go to the corner store. It wasn't a Wawa; it was mm -hmm. the corner store, and they knew your family. You could say, "Hey, my mom needs a pack of this." So, like me and my friend would go up for cigarettes for his mom, but we would just keep them. Mm -hmm. And then we started like and the, the stadium for uh, the high school that I went to was in my development. And there was a whole like we'd go under after football games and look under the bleachers for, for, for oh like half smoked yeah. cigarettes. And, you know, it was just funny, like how easy we had access to it. And it didn't deter like mm -hmm. that was one like chew. I never touched it again. But cigarettes didn't really because everyone back then, everyone smoked like it mm -hmm. seemed like yeah. everyone smoked. So you're like, I, I guess I better like now how everyone drinks coffee. It's kind of yeah. like everyone smoked. It's like, I guess I have to get used to this. Mm -hmm. This is what you do. But real quick. Before I know we're getting way off topic. 
So I was at a trade show probably like about 16, 17 years ago, and we were in a restaurant, and at the end for dessert, we had Greek coffee. So the grounds are in the cup, and they pour the water over it. So when you're mm-hmm. done, there's the bottom of the cup is filled with grounds. Yeah. I had never seen it done like that. So we were talking to the waiter saying, you know, what do you do with this? You just leave it there? And he goes, yeah, I've seen some, you know, like old school uh, Greek men come in and actually take a little bit, of, you know, with a spoon and eat it. I don't know if he was serious or joking, <laughs> but I started, I'm like, who wants to bet me to take a spoonful of yeah. <laughs> coffee grounds? Oh my God. I took a spoonful and it like jammed in my gums between oh, my gosh. teeth and yeah. wouldn't come out. Yeah. And I had to get up and leave the table and, and wash my mouth out in the sink yeah. <laughs> in the bathroom. Yeah. And I still couldn't get like the grounds oh, out of wow. my mouth. They were, everyone was laughing at me for like an hour afterwards. They're like, you idiot. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, he said that people eat it. I don't yeah. know. I know yeah. better now. Oh yeah. We had, <laughs> when we were kids, we didn't mind it. I like my brother had been doing it and he told me that we should do it together the one time and I did it. And I'm like, I don't know why we're doing this, but it's not that bad. It was better than when he convinced me to eat worms and we had to wash them <laughs> off in the mud puddle. But I'll save that story for <laughs> That'll be another secret. secret. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think with that. We should we should close this one out. I'm Tom. Thank you, everyone. And I am Fran. Thanks again, everyone. Uh, We'll see you next week. We're actually um, our guest is going to lead us more on like we're we're going towards a Halloween theme the next couple weeks. So our next guest will be a little more spooky, scary. You think? Yeah, maybe Maybe? a little bit. Probably not, but (laughs) but it's it's going to be more Halloween themed. So we're we're excited for the next couple uh, episodes. So. Uh, Make sure you tune in next week, and until then, keep it native. Thank you for listening to the Native Plants Healthy Planet podcast, presented by Pinelands Nursery. Remember to like, share, follow, and comment.